Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you April 2nd. It's a Thursday. Bit of crude uh, news last night. I think they're going to make a deal regarding Russia and Saudi Arabia on oil production. Um, crude pops up 5% here. Keep in mind, 5% is a buck when you're at uh, a notional $20. So not a huge move, um, but in percentage terms, it, it does count for more. $22 is interesting, but I still stand by my 25. 25 is the is the number that's going to really change the, the metric here. What's interesting now is everyone's incredibly bearish crude. Um, at $21.40 after a 70% down move. Um, this typically happens. And it's usually a harbinger of a turn, right? So, I mean, if you weren't bearish at 40 or 30 or 25 and now you're massively bearish at 20 bucks because it's a sexy call for crude to go to $13, usually sort of late to the party there so careful of a turn here kind of has that feel to it equities bouncing a little bit with the crude uh, there's some sort of correlation there but it's not as good as it used to be still on their knees equities I still foresee some some negativity coming our way in the future we want to be core short uh, if you can find a nice good spot and get yourself into a good average right now we're square but bear market you want to be short uh, equities when you can gold what a what a tough market to trade my lord 81 the low yesterday I like them apples what's up with that just a flush you can see that you can see from the candle just a flush of stale longs from 95 in the figure. Um, we talked about 11 becoming a pivot. We traded up to 12 yesterday, now 09 today. We're going to get long crude uh, up through 1610 for, uh, for a move up to 1700 and, and higher. So that's on the cards today for us. Euro. Don't uh, really necessarily understand what's going on here. Traded down to 03 um, yesterday. Weird. Uh, we like being long euro. We talked about it yesterday. Short dollar is, is the way for us. And um, in order of importance, short dollar Norway is the best. Short dollar Swiss is the second best. Long euro is the third. Dollar Swiss traded up to 91, which was also just like sort of weird, like why but now we have this sort of trap space here where some weak shorts will probably get stopped out between 9690 and 9720 be careful of that and if you're short and you can't withstand this kind of move for P&L reasons you got to cut your position down we still like uh, short dollar Swiss here Dollar yen is just annoying. You can see this line we sold yesterday down through 30. Looked okay as we touched the figure. You know, two distinct animals here. You got GPIF buying dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars over the next, I don't know, six months, 18 months. It's hard to really put your finger on where they are, but they're, they're like the elephant in the room. And then you have your bearish dollar stuff. So, I don't know. Stay away from dollar yen is probably the best advice. Aussie not doing much. Interesting one minute, 100 point bar yesterday up to 61.80. No idea what that was. That was just before the fix. Um, very difficult to monetize that kind of stuff. Just kind of annoying more than anything. It's like a Euro Yen who got smashed yesterday. I don't know. Does anyone know why Euro Yen got smashed? 
Obviously, dollar yen was offered, and, and euro looked like it was squeezing out some fix longs from the day before. Maybe that was just it. Euro dollar down, dollar yen down, euro yen got smashed, but that was a pretty big smash. Now we've bounced a bit. Don't really know what to do with euro yen. I do want to mention that there's probably a good chance we're going to take a visit through this 116.10 one more time. Um, obviously, in my world, dollar yen is going to have to drive this, but we'll see. If euro drives it, it's going to be a bit uh, uncomfortable for our dollar shorts. We shall see. Uh, dollars are 18.20. This is going to go to 20. Um, so there's you know easily another 10% in this. Very very difficult to stay to hang on with this long. It's pretty volatile, uh, but the rand is fucked uh, fiscally, uh, politically. You know, drought. It's just a mess, with the exception of the uh, the human side of that of that equation, uh, which seems pretty amazing. And I guess some of the terrain is is outstanding. Um, but the things that matter for FX, uh, which is fiscal, uh, discipline and leadership, this country lacks and uh, will continue to be screwed. Not great. Not great for those guys. Uh, Boons, looks like they've turned. You want to be core short. We've been sitting core short now for weeks. Uh, you can add now through the lows from yesterday. So you can add through 20 and just trade around tactically. Boons aren't going to run away one way or the other. There's a lot of funny business going on about the big uh, bonds out of Brussels. Big bonds out of Brussels. Nice. Um, that's negative for Boons, right? So if Boons, if Germany gets lumped in with all of the pigs, uh, it kind of waters down the value of the Boons. Do we go to one common banking union and one common bond market? Again, if we do this, this is bad for Boons. But for many other reasons, you want to be short Boons as well. I mean, as we've talked about a million times, there's just no uh, reason to be um, to own a contract with a negative yield uh, during a time when there's this massive, massive fiscal stimulation. Now we could go on and on and on, but we're not going to this morning. That's all I got, basically. We're looking gold top side. We're still trying to build into a safe dollar short and dollar Swiss. Dollar Norway uh, is doing what it's doing, just on its knees, no bounce. Not surprising there. Um, gold is in the crosshairs today. Wish you guys luck. Good trading day. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.